Hi everyone! Today I'm going to teach you how to explore the Models REST API using Postman. My name is Philippe Posil, I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce, and let's just jump into it. First, we're going to take a look at what the Models API is. Then, I'll give you a brief introduction to Postman and the Salesforce API's collections. Then we'll prepare our Salesforce collection for the Models API, and finally we'll run some requests using the collection against the Models API. The Models REST API connects custom third-party applications to the Large Language Models, or LLMs, through the Einstein Trust Layer. The Einstein Trust Layer is a set of features that protects the privacy and security of your data with features like dynamic grounding, zero data retention, and toxicity detection. With the Models API, you can run AI prompts either standalone or as part of conversations. The latter capability is interesting because it provides additional context to prompts. You can also create embeddings to train your model or provide feedback to generated responses. Let's dive into the Models API with an API client. The simplest way to get started and experiment with the Models API is to use Postman. Postman is an API platform and we can use it as a client to interact with our Models REST API. The benefit of using Postman here is that we've pre-assembled a collection of request templates with examples so that you can quickly try the API with minimum setup. Today, we'll look at the Models API collection, but note that we ship a variety of API collections for Salesforce clouds and products in our Salesforce Developers Workspace. The Models API require that you have a Salesforce org with the Einstein Generative AI feature enabled. If you don't have an org with such a feature, you can get an Einstein AI playground from Jihad to experiment. Simply head over to the Get Started with Prompt Builder badge and follow the instructions. Open Postman and search for Salesforce Developers Public Workspace. Then under Salesforce Platform, click on the Models APIs. From there, you want to click the fork button and create a fork of the collection into your private workspace. So here under Workspace, you'll want to select My Workspace. Then click Fork. This will create a copy that only you, you can access so that you can configure it safely. Before we continue with Postman, you want to get into your Salesforce org and make sure that Einstein is enabled. So you want to search for Einstein setup under Einstein Generative AI and you want to make sure that Einstein is turned on, otherwise API requests may not succeed. Then, still from the setup menu, you want to go into the App Manager. Now from the App Manager, you want to create a new connected app. Here, depending on your Salesforce version, you may see a second dialog to create an external client app as well. This is roughly the same thing as a connected app, except this only focuses on OAuth. In our case, you can use one or the other. The external client app dialog will be a bit simpler because there are fewer fields, but the fields that I will be filling using connected app will be the ones that you can fill as well using the ECA or external client app. The first thing we want to do is provide a meaningful name. So here I'm going to say models API for Postman. I'll leave the default API name. I'm going to provide my email address. And then we can ignore the rest. We want to toggle OAuth settings on. We don't need really a callback URL, but this is a mandatory field. So we'll just specify salesforce.com there. Then we need to select a couple of scopes. Now we need two scopes in particular. The first one is the API scope. So that's gonna be managed users data via API. And the second one is access Sessos platform APIs. Now, if you read the documentation, you may find a third scope. We won't need this one in Postman, but there is a perform request at any time, refresh token and online access. This is only useful if you work outside of Postman. Next, we need to enable the client's credential flow. And I want to confirm that. And we want to also issue JSON Web Token or JWTs as well. All right. Now we can save 
or app here. Sometimes you may need to wait a bit for the app to be created before using it at Postman. So I'm going to click continue. Now I want to configure the default user used in my app. So I'm going to go in manage. I'm going to go in edit policies. And from, from the bottom, under client credential flows, run as, I want to select my user. So I'm going to pick my admin user here and I will issue a JWT for this user. So I'm going to check that box as well and then save. Now our app is almost ready. The last thing we want to do is get the consumer details so that we can configure our uh, collection in Postman. So I'm going to go back in App Manager. I'm going to reopen my uh, models API. I'm going to go in here and go in View. And here I'm going to click on Manage Consumer Details. Now this generally triggers a two-factor authentication, so you'll be getting a code on your email address. Now you'll notice that I have blurred these sensitive information. The consumer key and consumer secret are very sensitive. So make sure you do never share them because this basically grants access to your org. So you'll want to copy the consumer key and the consumer secret and we're going to put them in Postman. So I'm back in Postman. Make sure that you select the root of your collection, go into variables and here we need to configure a few things. We'll be working with the current values for the collection variables. The current values are only kept in your private workspace. If you make in the future a pull request or make your collection public, anything that is an initial value may go out publicly. So you want to make sure you stick to current values for now. What we'll do is that our, we'll copy our consumer key in the client ID field and we'll copy our consumer secret in the client secret field. All right. Now the next thing that we need to do is to fill the off domain. To do that, I'm going to go back to my org in setup and this time I'm going to look for my domain. From the my domain dialog, you'll have your full domain URL and you want to grab this domain, copy it and paste it into the off domain variable. Now that you've done, you have values for all of these variables. You could uh, decide to change the model name variable. The models API work with a variety of LMs supported by Salesforce. This Postman collection is configured to use GPT 3.5 Turbo by default, but you may pick the API name of any model from the list of supported models, save it in the model name collection variable to use another model. Now, don't forget to save your collection variables and that's it. Congrats, you're done with setup. Let's now try the API. Now we can head to the authorization tab and get a new access token by scrolling to the bottom of the page and clicking this button. Now, if you did everything correctly, you should see this green checkbox here. What this means is that the authentication call was successful. Now, do remember also that you may need to wait for up to 10 minutes after you create the connected app for it to be available. Also, if you made a mistake in the collection variables, typically in the connected app consumer key or consumer secret, you may get an invalid grant error message. So make sure you review those carefully and also make sure you've saved those, your variables. Now, don't forget to click use token here. This will close the dialog and we can move forward. Let's start and run a first API request. We'll just try the basic one, generate text which is simply sending a prompt. So everything is already pre-filled and you want to head over to the body sub tab. And by default, the prompt is what is the REST API? Of course, feel free to change it as you want. And when you're ready, click send. This fires the request to the models API, which then goes through the Einstein trust layer and hits the designated LLM as we configured in the model name variable. And then we get a response. Here you can see the response of our LLM describing what a REST API is. Feel free to experiment further with the other endpoints and different LLMs, but keep in mind that rate limits apply when you use the models API. And that's it for this quick take. Today we've learned about the models REST API and a bit about Postman as well. You've set up the collection to interact with the models API and you run a couple of requests. Now I'm going to leave you with some extra resources so that you can continue your learning journey and maybe run a few more requests on the model APIs. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it, to subscribe to our channel for great content like this. Bye for now.